All right, estate sale finds from, uh, what was it, 26th yesterday? I think it was August 2022. Well, pretty big estate sale, large garage, lots of goodies in the garage. You know, all the usual stuff you'd expect to find. Not much in the house that interests me, obviously, but I always make a beeline for the garage in these situations. And for a grand total of 60 bucks, let's see, we have... I cherry-picked a bunch of tools out of a big bin. We got Billings, we got Proto Professional, Snap-on. Where is that little Snap-on ratchet I found? Thought I had it in there, but I guess not. Some decent screwdrivers, sockets, S and K, of course. Real USA Crescents. Ah, there it is. This I liked. <laughs> a little Snap-on hand ratchet sort of thing. And uh, well, it's in good shape, it works, and it's even got a breaker bar on it. Good stuff for spares and whatever, and I just like to go through that old stuff. I got a lot of garden tools, several rakes and shovels that aren't here. Those are getting kind of expensive in the stores now. You know, you go to a Tractor Supply or Home Depot, and they want $25 to $45 for some of that. Well, since I am around people that tend to break things a lot, I love estate sale finds on shovels and rakes and, and things of that nature. These are pruning shears and cutters and whatnot. We have a large enamelware basin. That'll be very useful for parts cleaning and whatnot. This little, what is this, two quart? A little beat up, but uh, it's intact. I can straighten that a bit. Looks nice. And anyway, you know, it was so, I knew it was going to be, you know, a one price deal no matter what I took. So I just loaded up on everything, even stuff I really didn't need. There's a little folding saw down there, and these funnels are always handy to have. And I seem to go through a lot of them. This is a pretty good one. Where's that folding saw? There you go. For all those of you who have those silky saws and such and think it's the latest thing, and <laughs> no, it's not. These have been around a while. Handy for cutting little branches and maybe take camping for firewood or something like that. Here is a Wagner heat gun, and I actually tested this there. While I was there, it does work. Yeah, it's got all the settings. This is one of the nicer ones, one of the bigger ones, more powerful. A little straightening is needed at the front there, but that's not a big deal. It was on the floor in a pile of junk in the corner. Where it looks like they just swept everything, and I recognize yellow. Pull it out of there. There we go. Large, probably 1950s or 60s General Electric fan. Needs to be rewired, but it does work. This is almost identical in style and design to one I have that was made in the 1920s. Really didn't change it much for a long time. These are nice fans, real heavy duty. None of that foreign made crap that they sell today with plastic everything. That's all steel. You stick your fingers in that thing, you're gonna lose it. You're gonna pull back a stump. Alrighty, in the basement, I actually only took this tool. It's a nice tool, little, uh, tool carrier here. I only took this because I needed to carry stuff. And like I said, it didn't matter because I knew it was going to be just one price for everything anyway. But uh, let's see, these gloves actually did not buy at the thing. That is for cleaning parts later. Things like sandpaper, light bulbs, you know, a heat tape, um, for reflective tape. These are all nice to have. I found this. I don't know what it is or if it has any actual value, but it's just a, a little, you know, a deer under a glass dome what the heck it was there so i threw it in all kinds of shoe polish for those of us who still polish our shoes this is expensive stuff and they're all full too you know there's probably 60 dollars worth the shoe cleaning stuff right there an old book the classic tales classic tales and everyday stories this is actually published in 1921 it's first edition from the young folks treasury I'll read that. Extra bag that I took just because it was there. They have this uh, Japanese-made wire stripper here. The original price was $7.25. I priced the current version of this, probably made in China, at, uh, where was I, Tractor Supply. They wanted over $30 for this. And it, it's, get it out of the box, it's brand new. Nice brand new wire stripper. Look at that. Not that I needed it. I have hundreds of wire strippers, it seems, but, you know, it's brand new. You can't pass that up. And like I said, one price deal. It didn't matter if I needed it or not. 
you know, I knew I was going to be 50, 60 bucks in the hole and uh, for what, if I took the whole damn house. So I just grabbed everything I could. We were there at the end of the sale where you get the best prices on estate sales anyway. And being that I'm not really going there because I need something, I don't care if all the so-called good stuff left earlier in the day. Good, high-quality pair of scissors. These are always nice to have because it seems I'm forever running out of them. And this one, actually, I think you can take them apart for, for sharpening. Who made that? Uh, is that upside down? I can't see. Eight-inch, made-in-USA chrome. <laughs> really nice. You know, there's some uh, things like this. A little bit of silicone sealer for cracks in the wall, whatever you need it for. Always nice, no trespassing signs. These are expensive too. It's two, three dollars or maybe more now in the stores. Nice little saw. Now, I didn't really need that, but it was in really good shape and the guy had it so carefully hidden on a shelf in the basement that I figured, you know what? I'm not gonna leave that. I'll just add it to the pile. And we got stuff like an oil filter wrench. Useful to have. Lots of wrenches. Made in USA, good quality. SAE sizes, because that's what I use. I work on older stuff. I love this. I just took this just because. And like I said, I wasn't paying extra for it. This, look at how they bent that. That must have been one. And yet, the teeth are still good. This is still holding. You know, it's still ratchets. So you can still use this, even after this kind of abuse. Who made this? Walden. This was made by Walden. Good quality. And it shows that it could survive that. Uh, we got some wood handle screwdrivers. These are always nice. I like wood handle screwdrivers. There's a little, little pipe wrench. More wrenches, more just regular wrenches. And you know, I didn't need my 400th Craftsman, but you know, that's why I bought it, because it said Craftsman on it. You know, this is not one of the cheapies. It's an old style, nice folding ruler. You never have too many of them because they seem to migrate around and get lost. And look at this. This is a Craftsman wrench, but it's bent too. This guy was kind of destructive with his tools because in that box, I have a bunch of broken SNK sockets that I threw in there because I know I can turn them back into SNK and they will make good on them. That needs to be cleaned up. That's also Craftsman. That's old. That's 1940s Craftsman. Uh, what didn't I cover? Well, that's it. The a tool tray. Some uh, things like wire brushes, stuff like this. Yeah, that's probably five, six bucks in a store. I didn't price it, but it's probably five, six bucks in the store. I never buy these new. I always get them at estate sales. Always good. I just toss in the bag as I'm going along. Good quality socket tray. I don't think it's snap-on. Probably not because it's not marked snap-on. But still, it's good. Oh, wait. What does that say on there? There's something on there. No. Mac Tools. That's Mac Tools. That's good because I got a bunch of Mac sockets and all this. All right. We also have a whole crate full of car chemicals and bee killer. We have starting fluid. It's not full, but there's some in there and I got to tap for it. All these brake fluids, an entire collection of Eagle oil cans. Whole collection. Usually I see these things selling at flea markets and such for like between three to six dollars each and we got all kinds of tips on these look we got one that's curved and all these weird little styles here good stuff a whole collection of them and here we you know we have transmission fluid 10w40 i'll use this stuff this is good for when i'm doing oil changes in the old lawnmower which burns oil anyway you know so look advanced durability 10w30 we have Semi-synthetic transmission lubricant. That's actually Harley Davidson motorcycle. It's a Harley Davidson product. Which makes sense, the guy did have a Harley. Mopar ATF4. Now you go you go to your Chrysler dealer and see if you can if you can still get this and price that. That's probably a ten or twelve dollar quart of transmission, maybe more. They're ridiculous with some of that stuff. More brake fluid, whole thing of STP oil treatment. I do use that. More, another thing of ATF4, some paint, chain wax. There's probably 60 or more dollars, maybe even 70 dollars worth of car chemicals right in this. 
And this was in the corner of the garage. Everybody was ignoring it. And of course, I make a beeline for this because I, I hate buying this stuff new. Light bulbs. I did loot that from inside the house. One of the few things I did. Yeah, they're good. They're old-fashioned light bulbs, and that's okay. I do actually have a use for those. And here we go. This, by the way, is a Nicholson file. These are expensive. This is USA made. It is top quality. It just needs to be cleaned up. I never leave those behind. Spark plugs. These are all new. Well, that one fell out. But these are new. They're Chevy, Pontiac, Buick. The guy had a bunch of Firebirds. I know I could use those. I always buy them. Spark plugs these days are like three, four, five dollars each, especially name brand. And, you know, if you get them, basically, what did I pay? If you broke everything down, I'd probably pay like five cents each for these things. Definitely worth having for when I need them. Here we got, oh, I like this one. This is the one with no name. This is a snap-on wrench. That's a snap-on part number right on there. For some reason, snap-on didn't put their name on it, but it did put the part number, so it's still a snap-on tool, still guaranteed for life. And I'm sure if you go to the snap-on dealer, I don't know these days what these are, but considering they priced a simple flat blade screwdriver to me not long ago for $35 for a small flat blade screwdriver, I'm guessing they get close to that just for this wrench. More of wire brushes. That's almost new. You know, you can't beat that. Wire brushes are always good. We have, let's see, I don't want to dump the whole thing out, but we have more tool trays. That's probably S and K. These are Wiss tin snips. Small short pair, handy pair too. Always good to have, even though I have a dozen pairs, now I have a dozen and one. Nice, nice pad on there, a little holder. Set of feeler gauges that caught my eye because they're vintage craftsmen. See that? Vintage craftsmen, looking pretty good shape too. I like vintage craftsmen, I do not care for modern craftsmen because they're all made in China or some other cheap-ass place. I like my vintage tools. Now this is a battery wrench. What kind of battery? I'm not really sure, but it is Craftsman. That's probably going to be 1960s, maybe? Battery. i got to look it up and see what, uh, what battery that takes. Not a modern one, obviously. Okay. Uh, we have an audience. A uh, whole bunch of stickers, you know, for different uh, speed shops and stuff like that. They were just there, so I threw them in. There's a picture of a square body Chevy truck. Some guy riding in it. Some must maybe it was his first truck. Who knows? You know, this, this, these are, what are these ones? M&R, safety through quality. There we go. Uh, I'm not really sure what this one is. The raceway. Oh, huh, NASCAR, okay. I'll find a use in them somewhere. Not that I needed them, but like I said, it was a one price deal. Things like this. These are always useful to keep around. These are just hanging on a wall. I just grabbed them. I have a couple jumper wires in there. Stuff like that, because you can't beat that. So that and, and look at this nice, this nice scraper with the ergonomic handle on there. You know, always good. That's probably at Home Depot, three or four dollars. Let's see, there's the jump, there's another circuit tester, there's the jumper wire, stuff like that. It was all in a bunch on the wall. Paint brushes. I don't know, there was, I, I've gotten lots of paint brushes lately, but these were scattered around the place. I just picked them up as I found them. These are expensive. You, you go to the store, you're not, you're not getting this for 50 cents anymore. You know, you're paying a few dollars, maybe more. So I always grab these when I see them. I don't care if they're used, as long as they're clean and the brushes are good. Oh, huh. and here we go. For those of you who remember the Dukes of Hazard, there's a bunch of little, they had them on a little shelf, a bunch of Dukes of Hazard cars, probably from the 80s. You know, there, there's one of Roscoe's police cars, looks like a St. Regis. Yeah. <laughs> they got Boss Hog, a couple of Boss Hog uh, Cadillacs, Daisy's Jeep, and Cooter's little, uh, little tow truck there. I figure, what the heck, I'll put them on a the shelf myself. I remember that show, I liked it. And that pretty much covers it. Oh, I did get a stool. It was a short, I don't have that here, it's already in use, but a little short uh, stool. Not quite a milking stool, a little bit taller than that, but just the right height for when you're working on brakes on a car like this. You can sit there and work on it if you don't have it on the lift, which I usually don't. You know, it's just right to sit on and you work. You don't have to stoop over or, or look up or anything like that. 
Uh, let's see. And what else was there? Oh yeah, the rakes and shovels. I covered that already. There was a, um, a small hammer, a sledgehammer. There was a sledgehammer, there's a small hammer. They've been dis dispersed already. Uh, one I gave away to somebody who needed it, the other one I just have elsewhere. Hmm, somebody likes to hog the camera, huh? And, um, let's see, what else? That, that was pretty much it. It was a pretty good sale. You know, it was very, very hot, very humid. And fortunately, the place had been pretty well gone through, so it wasn't a lot of big stuff. You know, and then, but stuff like this is what I look for. I don't need big stuff. I have big stuff, plenty of big stuff. And I have lots and lots of tools, too. But cool stuff like this is what I like to look for. And especially stuff like this. Yeah. <laughs> Love that kind of thing. And uh, let's see what else. And the fan, I'm going to rewire that fan. And that's going to be put back into service. And that's pretty much it. That pretty much covers the hole for the day. And uh, let's see. I did go to a flea market last weekend. Not a lot. It was one of those places where it's just kind of household goods, baby items, crap like that that I have zero use for. What did I get there? I got, uh, I got a, a, a five-pound cast iron iron old-fashioned iron that goes on top of the wood-burning stove it's been painted like 40 times and no one knew what it was I recognize it. it's for it's for ironing hat brims it's a small one for ironing hat brims now it's it's my walnut crusher and uh, what else did I get over there that, that was pretty much it a couple screwdrivers you know wasted my time really but you never know if you don't go you know there could be anything hiding in there in plain sight that's worth the fortune but if you don't go you don't get a chance to, to really see but I do have a short list of dealers that run these sales that I know generally have good stuff. You know, they, they, they stay away from the tag sale crap and they go for the, the really good items that, of course, attract me. All right. That is a nice box. I'm going to have to find a use for that somewhere. A little tray. That's whole, You know, somebody made that. In the old days, it used to be when you were, you know, a carpenter on a job, plumber, whatever, you made your own boxes, you know, your own carrier things, and that's definitely homemade. Somebody made that, and there you go. You know, so it holds your saws and your pipe wrenches and your whatever you're using, hammers and so on. And especially that heat gun. I can really use that. All right. That'll do. Kitty wants to get the last word in.